going on, everybody? I'm Aslan Hachavandi, joined by Jeff Cameron, host of the Jeff Cameron Show, weekdays, 1 to 3 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Tuesdays, he does headlines with Irish Show Fell, managing editor of Warchant.com, the ultimate semblance sports source. Jeff also hosts a slew of programming across YouTube on the On3 network, so do check all that out. It's good stuff. I assure you of it. Also, he does a pretty cool pregame show with Tom Lang on Saturdays, live on site at the Hotel Indigo. Get you going for this game between Clemson and Florida State. Number four, Clemson coming to town. And then we'll have a watch along during the game with Tom Lang, Dominic Robinson, and myself. And then a post game show 10 to 15 minutes afterwards. Gentlemen, here we are. Another big game for Florida State. Backs to the wall for all intents and purposes if they want to stay in this Atlantic race. Uh, it's been such a great start for Florida State, Jeff. 4 0 out the gates. Caught some of us by surprise. Maybe others saw it coming, I think. Uh, Tom said on the W's and L's segment that you guys did, he saw the 4-0 start coming. But these last two weeks, man, obviously has kind of been a bit of a, a downer for Florida State fans. What, if anything, can you touch upon has gone wrong for Florida State here these last two weeks, Jeff? A lot of scrimmage. I, I don't think they're completely healthy. You know, we've watched that happen. That's deteriorated over time. And eventually you're going to run into teams that can expose that. And I think to some extent that happened. But then also some unpredictable things have occurred. I think that they always haven't handled the moment very well when they are in a position to win a football game. I know across all of our War Champ platforms, we've all kind of taken turns wondering specifically if you could pinpoint uh, an, an area where they're pressing or is it the receiver group? Is it Jordan? Has Mike Norvell made mistakes late in games? And I think it's been a little bit of a, a combination of all of that. Um, th this is a better team. There's no doubt, Aslan, Ira, I think you guys would agree. This is a better team than we've seen. And with that comes expectations to win football games. And when you don't, people begin to search. People begin to wonder exactly why you're not. I still think they're a pretty good football team. Uh, to lose on the road against a team that's ranked in the top 15 that was favored to beat you, there's no shame in that. It's frustrating, but there's no shame in that. And to lose to a good Wake Forest team with a veteran quarterback and a veteran group of receivers, there's no shame. And Clemson will come in here as a favorite as well. But you'd like to win one of these so everybody feels that sense of desperation. I would seem like this defense was good enough and this offense was going to places that people only kind of really dreamt of with Jordan Travis at the helm and uh, things are hitting on all cylinders. That, that obviously has kind of changed over the last two weeks. Anything counter to what Jeff has said that uh, you think has stood out to this uh, struggle of late? Well, I think what's frustrating is, you know, we've seen him do it. And even in these games, you know, in the in the second half against Wake Forest, the offense looked pretty good. In the first half against NC State, particularly that second quarter, the offense looked really good. But then they've had these halves that have just been dreadful. You know, you get shut out. In the, in the second half against NC State on the road, in a game you have a two-touchdown lead, you know, that can't happen. The first half against Wake Forest, you know, we make a lot of, about the defense and the struggles they had in that game. But, man, this is an offense that's supposed to score, especially at home, especially against a Wake Forest defense that was not very good coming into that game. And you had seven points into well into the third quarter. To me, that's where I, I'm focusing mostly uh, because I didn't necessarily think this was going to be a defense that was going to be posting shutouts. But this offense we saw in the first four games, it can really make some make uh, create problems for defenses and can be explosive and make big plays. They've made too many mistakes on the offensive side of the ball these last two weeks, and it's burned them. Now, it didn't maybe burn them in some of those games earlier in the year, but now you're playing better teams. And this is a game this week against Clemson. I know we're going to break down the Clemson game here coming up, but that has to get better. They have to cash in on opportunities and stop shooting themselves in the foot because the defense is, is – is solid, but it's not good enough to win you games against decent teams. I mean, when you're mired in struggles like this, Ira, you, you kind of want to be able to fall back on what you know you can do well. Is there anything this team is doing right now that they can hang their hat on, that they can constantly kind of go to the well at, at at this point in time? I know their special teams is graded extremely high, but obviously we know that their kicking game right now is not up to that sort of level of, where, I guess, where their coverage is. I mean, right now, is there anything that Florida State does that identifies or is their identity that they can fall back on right now? To be honest with you, I know it's going to sound crazy based on the game we just saw, but I still think it's the passing game. I still, and I know this is a run first team. Um, but to me, if I'm counting on something in this team, especially now that Trayshawn Ward is banged up, I'm looking at what, what, what matchups can I win with my wide receivers? Yes. They dropped a lot of balls last weekend, but I believe in Johnny Wilson. I believe in uh, Micah Pittman. I believe in, Pokey Wilson and Kentron Portier. And I mean, you've got a group of guys at wide receiver that I think can, can win you football games. Um, you know, e even against good opponents. 
And I think Jordan Travis, with the pressure he puts on the defense between his running ability uh, and his throwing, I, I just to me it's still the passing game. That's what gives me uh, confidence going into a game like this. I, I just feel like they will be, especially at home, be able to have some success. They just can't have those empty possessions like we've seen the last couple of weeks. Jeff, is there anything about this offense or defense, I mean, this team right now that that is elicits confidence that you feel pretty darn good about? They can go and execute something, whether it's playing a defensive coverage or, or something they can do offensively right now that you think they can rely on. Jordan Travis. I think Jordan Travis is probably the one thing they can really rely upon. We know his numbers would have looked a lot different if guys would have bothered to make a catch last week. Uh, those numbers would have been a lot better, and they weren't terrible to begin with. I'm not letting an interception at the end or even the other interception really deter me from telling you that I think Jordan Travis has taken huge steps forward, and I believe that. I don't know that there's any other part of this team that that I can look to and say I count on them every week to be excellent. And that's mainly because the offensive line may not allow you to be dominant on the ground. I know they're a run-first team, as Ira just correctly alluded to. Sometimes I think they're going to have problems doing that unless it's Jordan's legs because, again, this offensive line is not completely healthy, and they're not dominant when they are healthy, uh, although Robert Scott getting back helped a lot last week. And then I think the other thing is, that that passing game is kind of born out of some of the balance that they're able to create with the run game. So I still believe in the offensive play calling. I believe in Alex Atkins. I believe in Jordan Travis. There are a lot of things that are a lot better from a year ago than they uh, maybe look to be right now just because you've lost two games. I still feel good about that. The games that they're losing and the game they may lose this Saturday, we'll see. You're losing to good football teams. It's going to happen. Florida State is still in the – in the process of becoming a better program and a better, deeper football team. They're not all the way there yet. And again, sometimes you lose games to good football teams, especially if you don't execute in key moments. But that doesn't mean they're not better and that there aren't areas to hang your hat on, Jordan Travis being first amongst them. 7.30 kickoff on ABC. Has the uh, Cameron warning meter been a, been been issued yet <laughs> what, what, what maintain level are we at right now Jeff no you know they blew it last week Aslan and Ira I would have had this as a cat five because you would have been in position to maybe be a, a co-first place team in the Atlantic with the hopes of winning the ACC or at least playing for the ACC title but by losing that game it doesn't ruin your year but it puts a damper on the idea that you could win the Atlantic which would have been a surefire cat five main team if I'm going to issue one Maybe a sneak peek here. Maybe a Cat 3, Cat 4. It is a night game against Clemson. We do care deeply about this matchup. Desperate to get a win. Plenty of fans, especially students, will be having a good time before this game. So just watch yourself. Make sure you're able to watch the game. But not quite a Cat 5. Didn't mean to give out exclusive content that you can hear only on the <laughs> Jeff Cameron Show. 1 to 3 o'clock, 93.3 FM, as well as here on War Chant TV. Uh, as you do get ready for that game, head over to the Hotel Indigo, 826 West Gain Street. Doors open at 3.30. If you don't have a tailgate, things fall through planning-wise. Come hang out with us. they got a full bar. They've got a yeah. tailgate set up in terms of a, a nice little meal, a little bit of a buffet you can help yourself out to. Uh, doors open, 3.30. It's cash bar. And you have to pay for the buffet. But still, though, it's worth the price. Uh, come hang out. Doors open, 3.30. Live show with Jeff and Tom starts at 4.30 over at the Hotel Indigo, seventh floor. Come to the top, hang out with us. All right, let's start breaking this game down then, gentlemen. Uh, you mentioned uh, we need to start focusing, obviously, on the task at hand here, which is Clemson. Uh, this defensive line, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Now, apparently, for the first time all year, they're going to be at full strength because early on, Xavier Thomas wasn't able to give it a go. Uh, Breesey's obviously had some kidney issue, infection that he's dealing with here the last few weeks, but he seems to be systems go. Literally, I think he kind of tweeted something or put on social, uh, something like that. So they're going to be they're going to be champing at the bit, chomping at the bit, no matter how you want to pronounce it. But can Florida State? Is there a way they can generate a run game uh, against this defensive line? Is there a way they can prevent uh, the pocket from collapsing? Can they find ways to be creative and, and, and give time and protection to Jordan Travis? What is the biggest concern when you're going up against this Clemson defensive front? Do you think? I think, you know, they do so – Florida State's running game, they do so much counter. Um, and it looked like NC State – it became – it felt like it was predictable. And NC State was kind of expecting it. And I thought that they kind of uh, shut down Florida State's running game. And I think it's going to be hard. Uh, you know, that look, Florida State knows they can't run right at Clemson, um, but they can't give up on it either. Uh, I do think you're going to see a lot of misdirection, a lot of things to try to slow down that pass rush with the screen game. Um you know, in, in some, you know, maybe some mis misdirection, things like that. But at the end of the day, their athletes are so good up front that sometimes it doesn't even matter. 
Like you, you could you could throw a screen and think, okay, this has a chance, and their defensive linemen are so athletic that they're just going to run it down from behind. I mean, it is a un- otherworldly kind of defensive front. Now you're getting these guys back, plus they've got some guys on the back end who are coming back from injuries as well. I mean, this is going to be the best defense in the, that they've faced all year. It's pr- it might be the best defense in the country, definitely in the top two or three. And uh, so that's it's every trick Mike Norvell has in the book has to come out this week because there's there's no way just you can just execute basic plays. Um, it's just gonna, it's going to be a huge challenge. But I do think, as Jeff said earlier, Jordan Travis is a, is a bit of an X factor. He's a different kind of guy, and you do have some better you have much better receivers than you did a year ago. So at least you have a fighting chance. Last year on offense, they did not have a fighting chance. And the end of that game, when everybody was so mad that they couldn't get a first down, and they had no chance against that defense. This year, I think they at least have a fighting chance. But, man, it's going to – Mike Norvell and Alex Atkins are going to have their work cut out for them. They're an aggressive front, Jeff. You, you think, Mike, and I saw you really nodding your head when I was talking about the screen game. You think some of this slow it down a little bit, misdirection, is that kind of part of the, the formula they're going to need to, uh, you know – Yeah, they're not going to – I'm sorry, Aslan. Yeah, they're not going to block him straight up. There's no doubt about that. And Breesy coming back is really uh, disheartening. Uh, it's good for him, I'm sure, but I don't care about that. I'd rather him not play, but I'm, he's back. Obviously, Thomas and Davis and Murphy and Henry and all these guys, they're all names we're going to hear on Sundays. They're really good players. And then I, you know, the other part for Florida State that's not good is, and Ira mentioned it, they get Venables back as a safety. Green comes back. Mickens comes back. All these guys, Sheridan Jones is back. These guys weren't playing a lot of them in the Wake Forest game, and everybody saw their secondary get lit up. Well, there were a lot of freshmen out there, and so this is a problem. These guys come back now, and I think you see the real Clemson defense. But I do believe that the screen game's important. I believe Jordan's legs are going to be very important. It was really good to see him take off last week and run in a way that was more uh, similar to the way we've seen him run in the past. He has to really run the ball for Florida State to create some sort of uh, balance and fair play, really, from the defense, if you will. Uh, otherwise, they're going to have a field day against this offensive line, which is, is not athletic enough or deep enough or talented enough to block this Clemson group. But they've done a good job of game planning around these disadvantages in the past. And to Iris' point, and I think it's a good one, when you have found ways to scheme one-on-ones in the past, it's been with receivers that couldn't win those one-on-ones. And you've had to do that with an offensive line you didn't trust and everything else. Well, now you got to do it again, but you have receivers that can win those battles. So if they're successful, I think you can cash in a little bit more and maybe make a few more big plays in the passing game than you could have last year. It's an uphill climb. It's not an advantage for the state. There's a reason Clemson's favored on the road at night, but it is something that is worth watching because you do have some guys that can do something about it if they get in one-on-one situations. Well, then offensively here, you know, the whole – outlook for the season if you're looking at Clemson was been is, is this quarterback going to be able to take a step forward uh, seems like he has so for Florida State will it be more imperative to to rattle to affect the quarterback Jeff to affect DJ Uyunglele or does everything kind of start and stop with that running back Will Shipley over there well, I think every team's going to test the underbelly of Florida State's, uh, ta- you know, between the tackles until they get healthy and prove that they're okay there and deep enough there. But I will say this, the only time you see Clemson's passing game really have a problem is when they get pressure, when teams get pressure on DJ. That's not unusual, by the way. That happens with a lot of quarterbacks who are pressured. But he's had a good season, man, and he's a guy right now that's pretty efficient. He's 14-2 to two touchdown to pass interception ratio. He's completing over 60% of his balls. He'll hit the big play over the top if you put him in one-on-one. But I'd rather lose that way by getting pressure on him and maybe those guys make some plays on the outside. I think if you sit back, where he's gotten better is he's shown a lot of patience now. And he'll sit in the pocket if you don't get to him and let a guy come open. I don't think Florida State can afford to do that. And I don't think they're very good at running zone principles anyhow. So Florida State really, I think, needs to come after him. This is a Jared Verse game, guys. Jared Verse has to win that matchup and wreak havoc in the backfield. The good news is I think he can. Ira, looking at this, I mean, this defensive line's been banged up. You've been at practice all week long. Uh, some guys coming in and out of the, the lineup for them. Uh, do they have enough horses to, to slow down Clemson's run game, or will this be a situation where, as Jeff said, uh, if Jared Verse can carry the night for you and get pressure off the edge, that might be just as important, if not more important, than slowing down Will Shipley in the run game? Yeah, it's almost contradictory. Like, I think I think Shipley's their best player on offense. Um, and so from that standpoint, you'd like to say focus on him. But the problem is, I think your path to victory is having making DJ have a terrible night. And and I, I think you have to force him to make some mistakes. 
The problem is if you bring a lot of pressure, you know, those coaches at Clemson are not idiots. They know that Florida State's going to try to pressure DJ Uyungle at on the road. This is going to be the most difficult road environment he's had since last season. And when he had these environments last season, he did not perform very well. So this look, if DJ has a great game on the road against a good team, it'll be the first time he's done it in college. So you have to pressure him. You have to create mistakes. The problem is they know that, and they're going to design runs for him off of you creating running lanes for him. And, and he doesn't run a ton. It's not like he's, I don't know, you know, Michael Vick, but he they run him in good times. And I think back to, if you think since Dabo's been there, really, they've, they've done a good job of this when Deshaun, when Florida State had Deshaun on the ropes one game, Man, he had just had some huge runs at big moments. They'll do that with DJ also. And I think that's the that's the one thing that worries me. I do think they can get pressure on him. I think they'll have a chance to maybe make some plays off of that. But you cannot get out of your lanes and let him pick up 12-yard runs on third and seven and, and things like that. So so they've got to get upfield. they got to pressure him. But they also have to be really smart and disciplined. I was watching an old episode of the War Chant Report the other day, Jeff. We used to do three keys to victory. You, know, you guys would all go around and give us three keys. We, I don't think we need three for this one. You, you got a, a key, Jeff's key to victory for Saturday for Florida State against Clemson? I'm a broken record, man. Jordan Travis has got to be Mr. Everything in this game. I think t- the, the offense has to have some success here. I, I, the defense has done a good job the last two weeks. The offense needs to come along for the ride here, and, and he's got to be the playmaker that we know him to be. I also think he's going to be running for his life a lot of this game. But you know what? That's a kid that makes plays, makes guys miss all the time. And if he can do that and create some big plays – Maybe Florida State does enough on offense to be in this game late, and the crowd can help take over, right? You try to get you across that finish line, but you got to be there late. And I think early on, it's a big test for Florida State's defense to stop Clemson so this game stays tight until they can figure something out that works. Um, it, it, it's such an easy thing to say and a silly trope. You know, great quarterbacks have to make plays in big games and all but it's true. It, it really is. I just think Jordan Travis is going to have to be a superstar in this game. And I think he has the capability of doing that. Um, it's it's a tough matchup for Florida State. I think Ira and I have painted that picture. We're realists here. But but Jordan can be pretty special sometimes, and he's going to have to be on Saturday night. Would that be it for you as well, Ira? Does, does Jordan have to get back on that sort of track, that trajectory that everybody had for him after four games to, to give Florida State a fighting chance in this one or anything else kind of standing out to you for a key to victory for Florida State Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with him, but I would actually go back to the other side of the ball and following up on the point I just made about rattling DJ. I mean, I just think they're going to have to make some plays on defense that gives this offense a short field, gives them some opportunities for for, for some cheapies. Because uh, you just look, none of us, nobody in the Florida State fan base is expecting Florida State's offense to go 80 yards against that defense. And this is a defense that that I think – Again, against that Clemson offense, I like their chances at home with the emotion. The and I know they're banged up on the defensive front, and Clemson's probably going to run right at them. But I like I I give Florida State a, a chance, especially with their linebackers against a more traditional running game. And I think he, he's going to have to make some throws. And I think Florida between the crowd and this defense, they can force him into some challenges. So to me, it's it's they have to make plays on defense, get off the field quickly, give the offense some good field position, and then you have a chance. If they can't do that. I mean, I, I I don't think the offense is going to be able to win this football game. Hope you're ready for this game, everybody. It's going to be a fun one. And if you're not, go to Corner Pocket Bar and Grill on a Friday night between 5.30 and 6.30. Jeff Cameron and Corey Clark will get you fired up for this one. Hang out the Corner Pocket as they do a live broadcast for happy hour. If you can't make it to the game, if you can't make it to Tallahassee, you can watch it live on YouTube. Again, 5.30 to 6.30 over at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Then Saturday, again, the Hotel Indigo pregame show, War Chant Game Day. Presented by Zaxby's, 826 West Gain Street. That's where Hotel Indigo is. Can't miss it. It literally just says hotel in big letters on the outside of the building. It's in College Town. And the doors open at 3.30. The live show starts at 4.30. That's with Jeff and Tom getting you ready. And then we'll get the watch-along and post-game shows to follow. So nowhere else you need to be other than Warchant TV and Warchant.com. All right, gentlemen, it's time to make our game predictions. But before we share ours, uh, we use the Royal We, so everybody else on the Warchant.com staff now can make their predictions for the game. Hey, what's up, y'all? I do have a pick that I think y'all are going to like. I am going with Florida State this week. Uh, I'm picking the Knowles in a lower score defensive game. I think this is such an important game for FSU. I think it's, you know, a game that they need a lot more than Clemson does. Um, I think Florida State offensively is going to have to roll out Jordan Travis a lot. Try to come back, Clemson's defensive line, which is probably the best in the country. 
I think Florida State pulls it out. I think the home field could be a huge advantage. Night game, Florida State uh, ekes out a defensive upset, 21-20, give me the Knowles. Gonna make my pick today from the beautiful Vista, use that word a lot this week, that is Capital City Country Club. Group in front of us is taking a hot minute, so I guess I got time to do a prediction. I don't feel so good about this one this weekend. DJ has been pretty good for Clemson all season long. He's gonna be testing FSU's corners down the field. We'll see what happens. I do like Florida State's chances to be in this game late, and if they win it, oh my goodness, it would be so emotional. But I can't pick it because that's not what I think is going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. Final score, Clemson 34, Florida State 28. All right, Noel fans, I'm walking to a Braves game right now, a playoff game. Um, so, But I'm still supposed to give you my prediction because I'm a professional. Sorry for the bounciness. I'll make this quick so you don't get a, you know, you don't have a stroke or throw up. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to predict it. I'm going to say Florida State, Brady, get out of here. I'm going to say Florida State wins 27 to 24. I think uh, Florida State has the second best offense that Clemson has seen. I think Florida State has a solid defense. Um, I'm not confident in this pick, but I do think it'll be a close game late. I think odds are Florida State plays these close situations, the critical situations better. And I think that Florida State's going to win. It's going to be the biggest win of Mike Norvell's career. So there, I'm on record. Go Bravos, if you can see that. Peace and love. I'm going to go on a limb here because it seems like this will be a game Florida State doesn't have pressure on it as much as the other last two. So I think they'll play a little looser. I think this isn't the Clemson team we've seen the last couple of years. They seem to be a little vulnerable against the pass, very average offense. So I like the Knowles in an upset here. Give me FSU 23, Clemson 20. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's get some good juju now. Our panel, myself, Jeff Cameron. We'll start with Irish Ophel, though. Clemson coming to town, taking on Florida State. Clemson number four in the nation, 730 primetime, ABC. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet on the call. Man, Osceola, Renegade, full stadium. Students, everybody's back. What do you got, Ira? What's going to happen Saturday night? Give us your prediction. Well, last week, I was the lone pick for uh, Florida State to win at NC State, and that worked out so well <laughs> that, that I'm doing it again. <laughs> I, I'm I'm calling the upset, man. I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna be wrong the first week and then or, or both weeks. I'm gonna give it a shot again. I look I, I and again I and as, as the points I made earlier, I just I'm I'm locked in on that. I, I just think that's the path to victory. I've looked back at uh, the last two years since DJ's been their quarterback, and again I just have not seen him have a good performance in a hostile environment on the road. Now maybe it happens this week. Um, but I think Florida State is going to uh, rattle him. I think the crowd's going to be a factor. I think the offense is going to make enough plays, maybe capitalize on a short field. I've got the Knowles win 24-21. to 21. Somehow Ryan Fitzgerald is going to kick. It's not going to be the game winner at the end. But he's going to get a, he's going to get a field goal at some point in the first half of that game, and they're going to win it 24-21. to 21. Shock the world and give this uh, fan base something to be excited about over the two weeks during the bye. Okay, that's plausible. That that's possible. I like it. Give me some more. Give me some more data. Give me some more good vibes here, Jeff. Can what do you think? Man, that? Ira's about to convince me. I, I I mean I don't see it at all. But I I want I like Ira's vision a lot more than mine. I mean he's creating <laughs> a scenario. He's giving you the story. I'm like man, yeah, that's right. Just keep telling me more. Go, Ira, I'm in. Uh, I I'll go with what I thought earlier in the week, and I I hope Ira's right and I'm wrong. I would love to come on here for the next report and just say, listen, it doesn't matter what I say. Follow Ira advice uh, but I don't think I'm going to be wrong here because I'm not even sure that it really matters if DJ's great in this game as long as he doesn't stink I think Clemson wins 34 to 20 hmm. uh, that's about where I was at but you both did such a good job in the previous two segments and especially Ira here earlier that uh go with Ira I I'm not picking upset I, I I don't think I saw a sharp enough practice in the two night two days I was out there to, to go maybe that far if you will Again, man, I know we're we are beyond the point of of moral victories. I don't I don't think it'll be a moral victory, but the point remains that this team is going to be competitive every single week. I don't think they're going to give up. They're going to fight. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, but I just think ultimately, man, not having a reliable kick game right now is still going to be too much of a hamper for them. I, I got Clemson winning twenty seven twenty one, so they'll cover too uh, for whatever that's worth. But um, get into the bye week relatively healthy. Get recharged and then take out your two rivals in the second half. Let me, of the can season. I ask you guys one question? Yeah. So, it, so if it is a, a, a one score loss to Clemson and you're going into this bye week, but it is your third straight loss. Yeah. What's what's the temperature of the fan base going into the last five games? 
Well, it's awful because fans are fans and they'll overreact and freak out and they'll say everybody stinks and we should fire all the coaches and they'll be wrong because fans are usually wrong. And I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I get it. Loss is hurt. Um, but I would just say that, uh, you know, if it's a one score game against Clemson, given what Clemson's been able to do in recruiting the last decade compared to Florida State, I, that's there's no shame in that. Yeah. I, again, I hate saying that. I'm a knoll for so many years. We killed Clemson. But that's not the reality of the situation right now. I do think, Ira, what you're asking is interesting, though, because in addition to the fan base being uptight and frustrated and angry, you better hope the team's not because then they got a bye week in Georgia Tech and you can't lose that game because then it changes the narrative for everybody. I don't want to. I don't want to put myself there. With everything Jeff is saying, like, what are we doing? What are we doing? I've said it well. We're going off script. My feelings are hurt. <laughs> All right, that is a wrap for us. Uh, stay connected to WarChant.com throughout the weekend. Here again, Jeff Cameron show one to three o'clock. Getting you ready every single afternoon. Then the live happy hour five thirty to six thirty over the corner pocket bar and grill with Jeff and Corey. Pre-game show hotel indigo doors open three thirty. And then the live show with Jeff and Tom starts at 4.30. War Chant Game Day presented by Zaxby's. A watch along with Dominic Robinson. A post game show with Gene Williams. Who else does this for any other team in the entire galaxy? Just Nobody. us. Just Nobody. all of us. Nobody. For Irish Show Fell, managing editor and for Jeff Cameron, host of the Jeff Cameron Show, I'm Aslan Hajavani. Thank you so much for watching this edition of the War Chant Report. We'll see you around.